All right, afternoon. My name is Evan Short and I run the electronics team here at the track. And today we're gonna have a look around the steering wheel on the car and explain some of what it does. We'll just get this one off Lewis's car. So most of you will have seen the wheel on television before from the front. So you've seen the main structure of the wheel. You've got the carbon central element to the wheel. You've got the grips, which are rubber and very much molded to the driver's uh, hands. And then the center of the wheel, we have the display where the driver's getting all that important information about what the power unit's doing, about the information coming from the pits, the shift lights, and all the additional bits of info that he needs to run the car. So if we have a quick look around what's on the surface of the wheel here, in the reach of the driver's thumbs, as you can see, he's got everything in the reach of his thumbs. We've got the DRS button, the drag reduction system, which opens and closes the flap at the rear of the wing. We've got buttons for what we call driver default, so something going wrong on the car. We might ask the driver to come on and do driver default 23 to fix a sensor or something else that fails. We've got the neutral button, a lot less useful nowadays, if we're honest, because in the pit stops, they no longer go to neutral. Pit stops are only two seconds long now, so there isn't time. Pit lane speed limiter holding the car exactly on that 80 or 60 kilometer an hour speed limit on the way down the pit lane so we don't lose any time. Pit confirm. Pit confirm is a signal from the driver that something's gone wrong on track. So nothing happens on the car, but when he presses that button, we all come running out of the garage ready to put right what it is or change his tires. Then a whole series of rotary switches. So we have the diff entry switch, brake balance, high speed, all the areas of adjustment of the differential. So the amount of torque transfer between the rear axle of the car, that's the sides of the rear axle of the car. And then a couple of switches to adjust the brake balance of the car, the brake migration, the brake balance. So the feel that the driver gets for his pedal. Here we have a marker button. Again, one of these buttons that doesn't do anything on the car, but signals to us that something's happening. So the driver might feel a bit of an unusual characteristic in the car and use that marker button to tell us in the pits that something's going on. Overtake, pretty obvious. There's moments in the race where we want the absolute maximum power, the maximum boost, the maximum hybrid energy, and the driver's gonna use that to get it. Talk button is the radio getting back to us in the pits. We have what's called a full duplex link so we can chat to the driver pretty conversationally. In the case of Lewis, there are times when he doesn't want us to talk to him, but he can't really get that voice from Bono out of his ears. Brake balance plus and minus, again, moving the brake balance of the car forwards and rearwards, and the driver will do that really dynamically over the course of a lap. And then a whole series of other adjustments on the front face here that have to do with the power unit tuning. So getting the engine and the power unit into the, the mode that is appropriate for that part of the race. That might be turning up the boost, that might be turning up the energy recovery, it might be turning it down a bit if you get to that element of the race. It's really amazing from my point of view that the drivers can keep track of all this while they're going. And in fact, they're doing all these operations at the maximum speed. So at the end of the straight, when things are quietest, they take their hands off the wheel and they'll make adjustments. It might seem really counterintuitive to us, to adjust the steering wheel at 300 kilometers an hour, but actually on the straight, that's when things are pretty much quiet for them. Then on the back of the wheel, which you don't see so often on television, we've got our upshift and downshift paddles and the clutch paddle that the driver uses to get the car moving during the race start. So if you imagine really that the steering wheel is the office for the driver, he only has three ways to interact with the car. He's got the brake pedal, he's got the throttle pedal, and he's got the steering wheel and all his learning, everything from go-karting on up to F1, has been done operating with a steering wheel that operates just in these two directions, just rotational. And what we've done this year is we've added another axis, another uh, degree of freedom that the drivers can use to operate the car with our DAS system. And they're actually pulling the wheel forwards and backwards to operate the toe of the car. It's really amazing to me that they've learned how to do that, even though they've got years and years of experience and muscle memory built up, they learned in the space of just a few short days to use that effectively in races, and we see them now using it all through the race last week in Silverstone. Really remarkable. So that's the wheel as it is. There's a lot in it, a lot for the drivers to keep track of, and that's why we do so much simulation work back in the factory to get them practice, to get them up to speed on everything they need to know about the wheel. For anyone who's interested in more sort of geeky details, the wheel is connected to the car through a connector at the back here, and what we call a CAN bus, so a network that connects to the rest of the car carries all the information from the driver back to the car and carries all the information from the car onto the driver's display. That famously went wrong for us in Singapore a few years ago with Nico Rosberg and he was left on the grid unable to shift gears and that's a moment that the electronics guys of the team still wake up in the middle of the night thinking about. We hope never to have that again. So I hope you've enjoyed the look around the wheel and please let us know as well if you've got any other questions about things that we can explain in the garage. <laughs>